everyone recording in progress uh welcome everyone to the regular selectmen's meeting first thing is approval minutes october 5. is there a motion to approve that i move okay there's second i second okay thank you any discussion all those in favor aye okay, okay again thank you john for getting it all organized um, next communications, um, there have been several, uh, postings on the website from our election officials about how to, uh, how to get, uh, absentee ballots and voting requirements. There is going to be a voting registration, um, uh, session from nine to eight on October 26th, um, uh, at town hall for people that are eligible and would like to register to vote. We encourage people to vote. Um, and there's also postings about um, absentee ballots from Bureau, the town clerk. Um, other communications, I'd just like to thank the uh, Little Guild for having a great uh, race on Saturday and uh, the Cornwall Association for hosting Newcomers Tea that was very well attended, uh, a lot of, uh, new uh, people in town, a lot of energy there. And again, two very nice events, uh, the show, show, Showcase Cornwall. Um, and uh, thanks for the volunteers that put both of those on for people's enjoyment. Uh, any other communications? Uh, additions to the agenda, I have two. One is uh, Cream Hill Lake study uh, request and the second is uh, Agricultural Commission uh, appointments. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Is there a second to adding those two items? I'll second it. All those in, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, <clears throat> next, uh, COVID. Uh, 19 update. We look forward to not having that on the agenda someday, uh, <laughs> but currently there are COVID um, cases in town um, that are popping up. So again, we have to redouble our efforts to wear masks and get vaccinated, especially people are now e eligible for their third shot or COVID booster. Uh, so we'd encourage that as well as um, people to get their flu shots because um, we're not out of the woods yet on this. Uh, we've been doing really well, but we want to keep that progress as we um, spend more and more time inside. Um, next, I have a report on the Sharon Hospital meeting. Um, and that took place on uh, October 14th as part of the regular uh, Council of Governments meeting in Goshen. Um, it was very well attended by area uh, first selectman and uh, Maria Horn, our state representative, as well as officials from the hospital. As people may have read, they, uh, the hospital management is proposing to uh, reduce uh, maternity services at the hospital, as well as uh, some of the surgery services there. This is a issue of great concern to local officials um, and uh, especially because it will increase uh, ride times for hospital care for people. Um, I would like to um, maintain a vibrant Sharon Hospital as much as possible as do I think um, other uh, municipal leaders. Um, yeah. And we are all also reliant on Sharon Hospital for our emergency medical services coordination. And they are very good about getting our ambulances in there and out in, in good time. They'll well, provide good uh, care for the people that come there. And we understand that uh, the hospital has to make money, um, but uh, we would like to see a long-term plan for the sustainability 
of the hospital because I think this is one thing that all our town residents or most of our town residents uh, rely on, uh, especially for emergency care. Um, so we would like to see that uh, fully in place. And again, I stress the amount of uh, people moving to town um, because a lot of this is based on demographics and having more uh, people move to town certainly will help uh, the call volume. On the reverse, if we don't have robust services here, there may be less people coming to the area and some of the uh, people on the call made that point. Uh, so again, it's a very, I think it's kind of a fluid situation and it will take a while to sort out what is, um, what is happening. Uh, we are going to meet with our uh, counterparts from New York State uh, in November with the hospital administrators uh, because some of the New York State towns right across the border are as vulnerable as we are to uh, looking at longer um, uh, longer rides to the hospital if, if these services aren't, aren't uh, provided. And we're especially concerned about um, uh, having to do that in winter uh, weather. So again, uh, that, I think that's something people should be paying attention to. And in, um, in my mind, it also uh, a point, uh, points out the need for a council of governments and to have unified action on these issues that affect all the towns in Northwest Corner, because certainly we are stronger working together as one voice than we would be as one small town independently or separately. Um, and again, there's very good cooperation between the area for selectmen and our, our legislators, um, but we need to work with the hospital to maximize uh, services the best we can. So are there any questions from the board on all that? Um, any comments? No, okay. Uh, next we have Cogswell, uh, bridge on the agenda. I think I saw Bruce uh, Bennett, who's been spearheading uh, things there, uh, might be on the call. Uh, one thing that did come up this week was that there needs to be some coordination with the uh, Inland Wetlands Office uh, because there is a stream obviously attached there. So they'll need some sort of work sequence and, and prevention of of any paint or whatever going into the brook, which is pretty standard, I think. So, um, but Karen said she'd be glad to work with Bruce, knows Bruce, um, and would be glad to assist that, uh, but we need to check in with the office there to make sure things are uh, all set as far as Inland Wetlands goes. Um, but I think we're on track for that. Is that right, Bruce, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, that's correct. Um, yeah. I briefly spoke with Karen about three weeks ago about an inland wetland permit. Yeah. Um, she indicated that the town had already pulled out that permit and that we could probably work under that permit. I don't know whether she's made a final decision on that, but I can, um, I'll can. i ask her about that and, and make sure that what I thought she said was accurate. Yeah, I think that sounds, that sounds correct. Um, it's just we need an update because this is different than what we originally had uh, talked about. And again, just um, procedures and stuff ahead of time would be good. So, but okay. I think other than that, we're ready to go uh, on your end, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, yeah. We're, we're all set. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't just, tell the big warm weather. Yeah, I didn't tell the big news. Big news is the jury settled on forest green. That's correct. Right. Okay. So that's the jury. That was painful. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. And the I need board my board like, back, by the way. <laughs> you would need what? Your board. I need my you board, get, my sample you board. You get the back. board back. And just to let you know, the board of selectmen did not have a vote in this process. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> but we support your efforts, Bruce, to try to bring people together and, and <laughs> get get through it so thank anyway. you all for thank you for your support as well all of you okay all right bruce good luck and we'll be in touch okay and come by and get your board anytime <laughs> all right so next we have uh housing forum uh the 
Cornwall Affordable Housing Plan is um, up for a forum uh, next, uh, well, next day, next tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. So that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, we are going to have some brief presentations of the plan and uh, some presentations by the committee members as far as how we got here and what are some of the details of the plan. And then there will be an opportunity for comments um, the last half of the meeting. And again, uh, written comments are most helpful. Um, and then the committee is going to meet um the following monday to uh to review the comments that are made and um uh, again take another look at the plan so everyone's welcome to come to that the housing plan is up on the um, town uh website uh, and again this is uh required by the state that we have to come up with the plan um and a group has been working hard on it um one thing um that you know, I think will be good about this is we're having a forum, and then we're scheduled to have a uh, hearing on December eighth. And again, the I found out between last meeting and this meeting that the state legislation does not even require a town to have a hearing. If it, if we do have a hearing, we have to notice it thirty five days ahead of the hearing. But we are not required to have a hearing. But in this case, we're having a forum first, uh, second form actually first and uh, a hearing to follow. So, and meetings of the housing uh, group in between. So anyway, I'm hopeful we'll have, again, keep this as an agenda item, uh, our housing plan. Uh, it was one of the uh, goals of our uh, selectmen when we uh, were first elected two years ago to house, have a housing forum. And now we've got, um, actually a housing plan to present at the forum. So again, I encourage people to come see what's going on, uh, participate in the process. And that's tomorrow night. And um, I believe the Zoom link is up on the website also. So people can see uh, where that is and dial in from wherever they feel comfortable. Okay, anything else on the housing forum? Um, Next, we have a town meeting. This is our annual town meeting. Uh, and uh, the only thing we really have to have on the town meeting is, uh, which is what we have on the town meeting, which is to review the annual report. And, uh, and this is for the year that just passed, the year that ended on July 1st or started the previous July 1st. So it's 20, 20 and 2021. Um, and this, uh, so there is an annual report that is put out every year. And the only thing that has to be in the annual report is the financial statements of the town, the audit. And that's what has held us up to date. Uh, the auditor is having somewhat of a setback year because of the COVID requirements because the state has not released the the financial reporting requirements for the ARPA funds, the American Rescue Plan fund. So we hope to get those draft financials uh, this week. And Barbara Herps, our financial officer, is, is uh, compiling the town report. If anybody has great pictures of life in Cornwall, important events in the last year, send them to Barbara. Um, she does a great job pulling this all together. And uh, that town report will be um, available on the town website and there is a hard copy that people can have um, that is available also at, at local uh, locations uh, ahead of the town meeting. So that is one thing and it is an opportunity. We try to get people representing uh, all the town boards and commissions there. Um, and this is not a financial meeting, but it is an opportunity to review the year passed and ask people, uh, commission members or town officials questions about what happened, what their plans are for the uh, future. And again, uh, is an opportunity for public um, participation and comments, question and answers, and the town officials will answer your questions to the best of their abilities. So anyway, look ahead um, 
for that to be posted. Um, the town report should be available ahead of the meeting. Um, so, and we'll give you an update on that. And if we have two selectman meetings before that date, but I wanted to get this signed. Again, we're, we're trying to get it working around the holidays. Um, so I would make a motion that we post the annual town meeting on uh, Friday, November 19th, uh, 2021, 7 p.m. remotely by Zoom uh, for the following purposes. One is to uh, receive reports, the annual report. Um, and the second is to adopt the five-year capital plan of the town of Cornwall as recommended by the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen. So again, that will be up on the uh, website ahead of the meeting. The Board of Finance is meeting uh, later, I guess uh, they're meeting later to uh, approve uh, that uh, plan. So anyway, they'll plan, they'll approve it ahead of this meeting. So, um, so I'll make that motion to uh, have the selectmen set the annual town meeting at that date. Is there a second? A second. Uh, second. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, uh, I would say all those in favor. Aye. 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 Sounds unanimous. And again, we'll need to come into the office or call John to get your electronic signatures signed up for that and the return of notice. And we'll get that. Um, again, it's helpful to have that, uh, try to give people as much um, warning as possible when we're having these events. Um, granted, things can happen between now and then, but we try to get things on the calendar as reliably as we can. Uh, another news item, uh, we did get the uh, uh, bill from our attorneys, Kramer and Anderson, uh, who worked on the town's behalf uh, with the uh, Ann Zinzer's land use uh, appeal, P and Z appeal. Um, the bill is for $12,000 uh, and I am uh, glad that the uh, uh, appeal has been withdrawn because that could easily have cost us double that amount of money. Uh, but I felt as we have $12,000 in our annual budget for legal accounts. Uh, people should know that bill um, uh, came in and we can cover that with our contingency fund. So it's not a question of being able to pay the bill. It's just a question of uh, an unusual large expenditure which should get reported. So that's what I did. Uh, next uh, item, one of our uh, big issues going forward is MIRA, uh, which is an acronym uh, for uh, the place that we uh, get rid of our uh, garbage in Hartford. Uh, I attended a teleconference last Thursday um, and um, as we've have stated before, the uh, South Metals facility in Hartford is scheduled to suspend uh, trash to energy operations um, June 30th, 2022. Um, in anticipation, Mira is developing options for the alternative disposal of our municipal customers, uh, municipal solid waste. Um, this inexorably means export to Western and Southern states. So basically what's happened here is the incinerator has reached the end of its, its useful life. Uh, other Connecticut solutions are limited because the other incinerators, one in Bridgeport, I believe one in Sterling, are also of the same vintage and are at or near capacity, uh, and do not have the ability to absorb this amount of uh, garbage. So uh, the issue in front of the 40 something towns that are members of Mira uh, is what do you do next? Uh, and again, uh, we're still uh, evaluating this, but one thing that they're basically proposing to do is to 
again, collect the garbage and then either truck it or have it go by rail, either to the Midwest or Virginia, Virginia or South uh, of Virginia. So anyway, it's a lot of expense, um, quite a bit of expense, a lot of energy to get rid of our garbage. And again, this is not necessarily a permanent solution, uh, but it is upon us. So what they are proposing, and I sent the board the information on this, is uh, a, uh, they're asking us uh, to uh, commit for a five-year period to a joint uh, effort to dispose of our MSW. And, and part of that would be helped by uh, foregoing our opt-out provision. Currently, we have an opt-out provision in the contract that when things were running well, if towns decided to walk away from uh, mirror or CRRA, which was formerly known as, they could do so without a huge financial penalty. Uh, and uh, but what they want to do now is is be able to go out to bid for these next five years with a uh, with a commitment from towns that they'd be in for five years and they wouldn't opt out after two years. So again. Uh, in front of the board is a decision to make. Uh, would we consider this? I'd like to do a little more research, but I think definitely from what I've gathered, we should. Um, I don't think we're going to do any better than this by ourselves. Um, and we would be exposed to uh, a bit of downside risk if we did that. Um, so I would like to talk to our neighboring towns and see what some of their ideas are. Um, I think that, uh, Ted, haven't you had some conversation with the uh, people up at the Salisbury Sharon Transfer Station? Yeah, I have. I've talked to their uh, uh, operator, chief operator up there, uh, Brian. Uh, and we've had some discussion there, and he uh, uh, would like to everybody to try to stay together there. Um, obviously, you know, uh, it'll work a little bit easier um, and we have a bigger voice if, if everybody can kind of get on the same program. So uh, we've talked about it on and off for a couple months now and, and we, I agreed with him. Right. And I've got a call into Curtis uh, Rand up there because um, there may, there's also grants apparently from DEP about for page you throw programs. And I think if we're going to do, I mean, the, obviously the pressure is going to be on the municipalities. We're looking, we may wind up with about a 30% increase in the cost to get rid of our MSW. That's not, you know, that's not a catastrophic hit to the town, but again, we've seen this, this uh, issue pressure our budget more than any other last year. Um, and I think environmentally, uh, shipping our garbage to um, a faraway place is, is a pretty big environmental disaster, regardless of where it winds up. I mean, basically it's going to a big hole in the ground. So uh, there may be some initiatives out there that we can do as a region that makes sense. Um, and so our, you know, we're gonna be, this is a big issue in front of the town that we'll be working on in the coming year. Um, and I would like to tell our friends at Mira that we are considering this opt out, but we're going to need probably at least a couple of weeks to get more information on it and uh, before we can act on it. I think they were looking at trying to get a decision from the towns um, by December 1st. So I think we should be able to decide what we're doing by then. Um, any other thoughts from the board? I know that's, that's a lot, at one, uh, but I think it's pretty, it's not a really complicated problem in some ways. Um, it's an unfortunate problem, but that's, uh, I mean, to replace that incinerator, they were talking about uh, $600,000. The yeah. problem to, to pay for that among the membership would have uh, 
increase the cost of getting rid of the garbage much greater than trucking it out of state. So that may some municipality hesitant to re, you know, go down this this incinerated route before, um, you know, again. So anyway, um, any other thoughts from the board on that? Um, I think that's a wise course of action. Okay. So they want me to report to them by Friday that we're interested, but we're going to need, we're going to need a month or so to um, get it, get our research done and come up with the real, the real answer, the full, full answer. So um, yeah. So is that the consensus of the board? That makes sense to me. Yes. Okay. Great. Priscilla. Yeah. You all in on that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ted. Any other thoughts from our folks on the front line? No, uh, not, not at this, not this moment. Did you, do you want to just give a quick, a little update about, you talked about Brian has a composting thing going there and it's, it's up and down a little bit, but he's looking again to get, if more towns did a composting thing, it might make it more viable for everybody. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, real quick, uh, a big summary. Uh, Brian has reached out to all of the uh, region one transfer stations uh, within the area. And he's trying to come up with a regional plan. They have a pilot program right now. Um, I've since forgotten how many households are actually participating, but there are quite a few. Um, and uh, there's a company out of Ridgefield, Connecticut, that is starting a compost program. They share in transfer stations. The Sharon Salisbury Transfer Station has joined up with them and they have a composting program going on right now. Brian was looking to see how many Region 1 transfer stations might be interested in joining with them to, first of all, cut the amount of MSW that is going, that we're shipping out, which is basically all uh, food um, leftovers and, 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 and processes. Uh, and what, what he, they're paying right now, they're paying uh, roughly $250 each week to have Ridgefield come up and they have uh, totes that are set up at the transfer station where people are bringing their uh, uh, compost uh, that they have at home. It's like in a big bin, like your recycling bin, and they're dumping it in these totes. And they also have to pay, I think it was $10 per tote um, and he has about six or seven of them. And he said every week they're full. Um, huh. So what he was hoping to do is, uh, you know, perhaps get other towns involved, which, you know, again, the more, more towns you have involved, the bigger voice you have. And it, it you know, it would help uh, our area here for MSW. Um, and I told him, you know, we, we would think about it. I've been talking to him again for a couple months about it. And it's still, it, it's, it's not a, right now it's not financially feasible, but he's looking at another alternative for that. And again, that was to possibly share that approach um, with, with some other neighboring towns that Ridgefield would be able to uh, uh, contact. So that's, that's another thing we wanna perhaps look into the future with. How big? How big are his totes? Are they like um, five hundred pounds or hundred pounds? Yeah, I, I, they're um, a large garbage can. Those the 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 Welsh garbage cans that you see that yeah. some people have uh, laying on the streets with their garbage. They're that big uh, a tote. And then what they do? They bring in their comp. They have um, uh, like regular recycling bins with a lid on them. That's where they put their compost, and they've actually uh, paid for those to the uh, composting bins for the household that are participating, and they all bring, you know, they either get picked up at their house or they bring them to the transfer station. So the totes are a good sized garbage can. Uh, for weight wise, I don't know, got to be well over a hundred pounds. I would, I would assume. 
Yeah, if you talk to them again, I wonder what they're doing with their schools and restaurants up there. Because I know some of yes. those schools are giving 100, I mean, they're serving 1,000 meals a day. You know, so the amount of food that's being going into their waste stream is so much more than ours. But if you get some of those big institutional places plugged into a, con I know they, they tried before, but I'd be curious what how they're plugging them in. Yeah, they're again, that's what Brian's trying to do. He's trying to reach out to them to get them back on the program hopefully a little more manageable than it was last time. So you don't have all the, you know, the forks and the spoons and so forth that, that definitely can't go in there. Um, but he's, he's, he's on that program to reach out to them again and hopefully get them on board, which of course they have many more than we do, but we do have, you know, a few places that, that, you know, uh, instead of going into the garbage could actually, you know, uh, benefit from this program. Um, if we can get some of them on board too, but it is definitely something to look forward to. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Ted. Any questions? Some more questions from the board, other than um, garbage is a big deal now. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, uh, our district agenda: we have uh, Primo Lake study uh, requ uh, request. Um, Sort of segue, segues into um, our transfer station. We've got a request from the Cream of Lake Study Group for three hundred dollars coming up on our screen. Um, yeah, so here it is, um, and then. Um, So this is from Nancy Berry uh, and they're requesting $300 uh, for um, Yukon so we can do a fall testing. Okay, so it seems like a good use of that program. Um, and I think, I think um, yeah, so again, they want to do some fall testing, and this wants to happen. And I believe we're still accumulating bottles, but I'd make a motion that we grant this request. Um, I second. I think there's no further discussion of, like around it. I think it's very clear what they want, and I think we should right. support it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, my only thing is it depends on how much, how many bottles go away in the short period of time. And I'd, I'd make one thing, we do have the town endowment, which has about $1,500 in it at the present time that we can use for municipal purposes. So I'd say if we can't generate it through bottles and cans, then we would get the money through the uh, town endowment funds, which are at our discretion to use for um, municipal purposes. So I would make sure. that double I have yet double barreled uh, motion to uh, get the work done. Okay, great. So any more discussion? No. No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, let's see, our other, our other addition was the agricultural, um, Okay. Our cultural commission, we got a, a letter from Chair Bill Deneen asking us, they've got some new members uh, that are interested in joining and uh, young members, all good to have young members involved in the town. Um, and so his request is quite um, straightforward. So I would make a motion that we um, reappoint some members and add some new members um, to the Agricultural Committee. Sounds good. Is there a second? A second. Yeah, and I think again, if there are other people that are interested in promoting agriculture in town, to let Bill know. Um, it's, uh, again, they put on a nice fair and do some other events during the 
year. Um, so just let Bill know, and I'm sure they can use more help if there's help out there. So anyway, any other discussion? All yeah. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, now I see I've, I went right over the tax refund recommendation. Uh, so I would, uh, I think the board has that. We have, 80, we have $83 uh, tax refund recommendation from the tax collector due to a expiration of a motor vehicle lease. So I'll make a motion that we act on that tax refund recommendation. Approve. Okay, so that's the second. Any discussion? No. And again, thanks, Jean, for for taking care of that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I think we've gotten through our agenda there, except for public comment. Uh, any public comment out there? See the press is here. Any yeah, tough good. press? Tough press question from the press. One question, Bruce, can we ask that you let us know when the painting goes on so we can get a photo? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank we'll you. Do. Okay. I want to see the forest green. Okay. <laughs> well, you can, the sample is down in Gordon's office if you want to take a look at it before we put it on the, uh, <laughs> on the bridge. <laughs> and also, can I ask what you're applying the paint to? The metal rails? Yeah, so uh, what we're doing is we're painting the metal rails that were what are called W rails. Um, and we're also paint, uh, painting the posts uh, that support the W rails. We are not painting the black. There's a rubber block or a hard rubber block between the rail and the post. We are not painting those. Uh, I told Gordon that we will be painting the upper rail um, but that is to be replaced with wood sometime in the future. Oh, another little update, Bruce. I did talk to Duke Pozzozzi about getting a piece of wood rail. Yes. And a little piece of Cornwall history that things repeat themselves. His great uncle was the state engineer that designed that bridge. And he was oh all very proud of the bridge. And Duke is thrilled to have his family participate again in the bridge almost a hundred years after his great uncle, uh, after graduating from RPI, designed the bridge originally. So it's, it's really funny to have these little anecdotes, I think. So anyway, Duke's all on board with a, a wooden well, that's party. That's great, so, yeah, anyway. that's great. And we, what, Gordon, you, you had talked about uh, using locust. Is that what we're gonna be using? I think so. I, haven't, he, I didn't get that far with him, whether it would be locust or white oak is his other big wood, but whatever it is would be pretty substantial. I know he uses, he does naval timbers. So whatever he's going to do is going to have some, a little bit of heft to it. So anyway, okay. Okay, that's, that answers that question, Ruth. Any other questions? Susan's got uh, a comment. Uh, hi, yes, there's a comment. Um, I'm really not liking the idea of shipping our garbage way the heck out to a big hole in the west and building that up I, I don't the incinerator has been such a good thing I and mean, when I throw out some uh, garbage and I recycle as much as I can and I do my own compost at home I'm gonna have a really hard time throwing out my garbage if I know it's being stuck in a hole somewhere it's, it's, that really grates <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anybody's very happy with this uh, interim solution, but, but there are people that are wor full-time working on something better, closer, more permanent, so. All right, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. and I know the DEP is not happy with this, uh, but yeah. again, you know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big lift to try to get to a better place. So anyway, and I think the biggest thing we can do, as you said, recycle, cut down uh, on your, you know your plastics and junk as much as you can get some chickens pigs eat up that food scraps whatever you want to do turn it into eggs um yeah, yeah. be creative yeah maybe that's something that could be when this change does come beforehand maybe that could be a topic of a forum or something to 
uh, educate the Cornwall town on different things they could do to help to lessen. Yeah, yeah, no, I said it's gonna be, it's gonna be on our agenda for quite a while, I think, Susan, so. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay, hearing no other comments, I wish everybody a good evening. Thanks for coming. Thanks for getting everything done. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks a lot. Good night. Yep. Good night. Good night. <coughs>